Sometimes I... Sometimes when I hear somebody walking up the stairs, I feel it's him. And I look at the door thinking, maybe... Even though I know in my head he's gone, you know? He knew how to have fun, and especially with his children, to enjoy life. He knew how to really make the kids laugh and joke and just have memorable days that, you know, they can look back and say, wow, my dad was fun. If there was a problem even with anyone, the neighbors called my husband to solve the argument. If he had a problem with the family, my husband was called to, you know, because that's the type of husband that I had. They knew that Ziad would be the one that would um, make everything okay. For me, 20 years, it might not seem a lot, but I had a wonderful marriage. And I loved him more the day he died than I did the first day that we got married. פלסטיני נהרג אחר הצהריים מאש מג"ב בשכונת וואדי ג'וז במזרח ירושלים לאחר שעל פי החשד ניסה לבצע פיגוע דריסה ופצע קל חמישה שוטרים. חמישה לוחמי מג"ב שהלכו בטור נדרסו ונפצעו קל. השוטרים ירו באוויר, הצעיר הפלסטיני נמלט ברגל ואז נורה בראשו ומאוחר יותר מת מפצעיו. במג"ב משוכנעים, מדובר בפיגוע דריסה. Just the language of the police. I mean, not even an attempt to, 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 to soften the language. But just, and he is a terrorist, and he is this and that. Not, I, I remember that in one of the reports, there was not even his name mentioned. My husband was waiting. The rock hit my husband's windshield directly in front of him. And in doing so, there was Israeli soldiers coming up the hill. He accidentally hit some of them. One of the border police called Shadi. As my husband was getting out of the van, while he's standing... Boom, from his back, he was shot in the back. Clean shot right through, my husband fell down. They at this time could have easily have handcuffed him and thrown him in the back of the ambulance or in the back of the Jeep. No. What did they do? One of the other people, his name is Maxime. Maxime took it upon himself, went up to my husband, who was already on the ground. Boom, boom, boom. While he was on the ground, he was probably thinking, who's going to take my care of my children and my wife? You know, I know him. That's all I could think was, who's going to take care of my children and my wife? Something on the road can be interpreted as a terrorist attack and which will justify, justify killing. And after so much effort, you know, it's not... I mean, the guy was already on the floor when he was uh, finished. I wanted to see what this man thinks about Arabs. He says that he hates Arabs. He's calling for killing Arabs. Uh, things you like to eat. Arabs. Extracurriculum activities that you like. Punching, destroying people. What turns me on? Violence. Things that I am looking for. Redhead Arabs. Destroy Turkey and all the Arabs from the world. He replied, I'm with you, my brother, and with the aid of the God, I will start this. Smiley. They wanted to take him into custody and they received a phone from a very high officer and told them and ordered them not to take him into custody. That the shooting was unlawful, the killing was definitely unlawful. There is at least 
uh, a negligent killing here, if not much more than that, up to murder. But but there is definitely a criminal act here. There is no justice when it comes to to Palestinians. Our blood is cheap. Be it Christian or Muslim, Palestinian blood is cheap. Whether the conflict is with the Palestinians in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, or with the internal Israeli Arab citizens, uh, the Arab minority in Israel. When it comes to this, suddenly the same bodies that have, been, that have proved capability in internal Israeli Jewish affairs, then suddenly everything is, uh, uh, falls apart and the standards fly down. This is a state that's telling their soldiers, do whatever you want, don't worry. We will not investigate. Don't worry. Even though we know that uh, the system uh, protects those soldiers and does not, and there is not a question of uh, culpability at all, that actually they are all enjoy this impunity. Each time that it happens, you think, okay, maybe this time, maybe somebody at the top understands that it has to be stopped, and it has to be stopped only if we are talking about, only if if people are being warned and punished for this. Uh, but it doesn't happen. Because I have three girls that I have to support and I have to raise. And I don't want to raise them hating somebody or hating a group of people that's Jewish and just hating them because they killed, they didn't kill my husband. Maxime and Shadi killed my husband. And that's what I want. I want them to be accountable for what they've done. And we go walking hand in hand no, on the beach and he put his arm around me. And he would turn to me and he'd say, he would see a little old um, Jewish lady and an old Jewish man and he would be like, I wonder if that's going to be like us, you know, 20, 30 years. And I was like, of course. And he was like, I hope so, you know. I'm very optimistic. Okay, I do hope. There is hope. <laughs> and that's why I want as many people to take up this story and run with it. Because it's just not my husband. This is not just my husband's story. This is every Palestinian that lives here, their story. You know, it's not the worst story, but it's, it's my story, you know? And it, I'm not just telling it because, oh yes, my husband was wonderful to me and my daughters, and that's all that I knew, you know? But this is a Palestinian issue that goes on every single day, every day.